This conference will now be recorded. This conference will now be recorded. Hare Krishna. Welcome back to our online Bhagavad Gita reading retreat labs. So in the last session, we have seen the verse number one to verse number 13 of chapter number one. So basically it was all about the preparation for the war started. And in the verse number one, we have seen uh, the Thrasta's inquiry to Sanjaya. So the Thrasta is inquiring what his sons and Pandavas are doing in the battle of the Kurukshetra battlefield. Then we have seen the verse number two to verse number eleven. It was all about uh, Duryodhan's fear and diplomacy, describing the armies. So in today's session, we will read from verse number fourteen to verse number twenty. It is all about the different signs of victory. So without any delay, let's uh, go back to our Veda base. Yeah. Chapter number one, verse number 14. Translation. On the other side, both Lord Krishna and Arjuna stationed on a great chariot drawn by white horses sounded their transcendental counsels for port. In contrast with the counsel blown by Bhishma Dev, the counsels in the hands of Krishna and Arjuna are described as a transcendental. The sounding of the transcendental councils indicated that there was no hope of victory for the other side because Krishna was on the side of the Pandavas. Jayastu Pandaputram Yesam Takshe Janardana. Victory is always with persons like the sons of Pandu because Lord Krishna is associated with them. And whenever and wherever the Lord is present, the goddess of fortune is also there because the goddess of fortune never lives alone without her husband. Therefore, victory and fortune were awaiting Arjuna. It's indicated by the transcendental sound produced by the council of Vishnu or about Krishna. Besides that, the chariot on which both the friends were seated had been donated by Agni, the fire god, to Arjuna. And this indicated that this chariot was capable of conquering all sides wherever it was drawn over the three worlds. Now we will move to the next verse, chapter number one, verse number 15. Translation. Lord Krishna blew his consul called Panchajanya. Arjuna blew his the Devadatta and Bhima, the voracious eater and performer of Herculean tasks, blew his terrific consul called Pondra. What, what? Lord Krishna is referred to as Rishikesh in this verse because he is the owner of all senses. The living entities are part and parcel of him. And therefore, the senses of the living entities are also part and parcel of his senses. The impersonalist cannot account for the senses of the living entities, and therefore, they are always anxious to describe all living entities as senseless or impersonal. The Lord, situated in the hearts of all living entities, directs their senses, but he directs in terms of the surrender of the living entity. And in the case of a pure devotee, he directly controls the senses. Here, on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, the Lord directly controls the transcendental senses of Arjuna. And thus, his particular name of Rishikesh, the Lord has different names according to his different activities. For example, his name is Madhusudan because 
he killed the demon of the name madhu his name is govinda because he gives pleasure to the cows and to the senses his name is vasudev because he appeared as a son of vasudev his name is devakinandan because he accepted devaki as his mother his name is yashoda nandan because he awarded his childhood pastimes to yashoda and the love his name is parthasarthi because he walked to the chariot of his friend arjuna similarly his name is rishikesh because he gave direction to arjuna on the battlefield of kurukshetra arjuna is referred to as dhananjay in this verse because he helped his elder brother in fetching wealth where it was required by the king to make expenditures for different sacrifices similarly bima is known as brigadar because he could eat as voraciously as he could perform herculean tasks such as killing the demon hiramba so the particular types of counsel known by the different personalities on the side of the pandavas was awakening with the lords were all very encouraging to the fighting soldiers on the other side there were no such credits nor the presence of lord krishna the supreme director nor that of the goddess of fortune so they were predestined to lose the battle and that was the message announced by the sounds of the concerns now we will move to the next verse chapter number 1 verse number 16 so we have 16 to 18 verses together here translation king yudhishthir the son of kunti blew his counsel the ananta vijay and nakula and sada blew the sukhos and manipushpada that great archer the king of kasi the great fighter sikhandi drishtadyumna virata the unconquerable satyaki drupada the sons of draupadi and others o king such as the mighty arm son of subhadra all blew their respective consuls but what sanjay in for king dhritarashtra very tactfully that this unwise policy of deceiving the sons of pandu and endeavoring to enthrone his own sons on the Spirit of the kingdom was not very laudable. The signs already clearly indicated that the whole Puru dynasty would be killed in that great battle. Beginning with the grand sire Vishma, down to the grandsons like Abhimanyu and others, including kings from many states of the world, all were present there, and all were doomed. the whole catastrophe was due to king dhritarashtra because he encouraged the policy followed by his sons now we will move to the next verse chapter number 1 verse number 19 translation the blowing of his different consuls became uproarious vibrating both in the sky and on the earth it shattered the hearts of the sons of dhritarashtra when bhishma and the others on the side of duryodhan blew their respective consuls there was no heartbreaking on the part of the pandavas such occurrences are not mentioned but in this particular verse it is mentioned that the hearts of the sons of dhritarashtra were shattered by the sounds of vibrated by the pandavas part this is due to the pandavas and their confidence in lord krishna one who takes shelter of the supreme lord has nothing to fear even in the midst of the greatest calamity so this is a very important sentence here we will read once again one who takes shelter of the supreme lord has nothing to fear even in the midst of the greatest calamity So now we will move to the next verse. That is chapter number one, verse number twenty. Translation: 
At that time, Arjuna, the son of Pandu, seated in the chariot during the flood, marked Hanuman, took off his bow and prepared to shoot his arrows. O king, after looking at the sons of the Dhrashtra, drawn in a military array, Arjuna then spoke to Lord Krishna these words. Purport. The battle was just about to begin. It is understood from the above statement that the sons of the Dhrashtra were more or less disheartened by the unexpected arrangement of military force by the Pandavas, who were guided by the direct instructions of Lord Krishna on the battlefield. The emblem of Hanuman on the flag of Arjuna is another sign of victory because Hanuman cooperated with Lord Rama in the battle between Rama and Ravana and Lord Rama emerged victorious. Now, both Rama and Hanuman were present on the chariot of Arjuna to help him. Lord Krishna is Rama himself. And wherever Lord Rama is, his eternal servitor Hanuman and his eternal consort Sita, the goddess of fortune, are present. Therefore, Arjuna had no cause to fear any enemies whatsoever. And above all, Lord of the senses, Lord Krishna, was personally present to give him direction. Thus, all good counsel was available to Arjuna in the matter of executing the battle. In such auspicious conditions, arranged by the Lord for his eternal devotee lay the signs of assured victory. So in this section, we have seen what are the different signs of victory from Arjuna's perspective. So also we have seen a different uh, knowing of consuls, the different consuls name which we have seen, Panchajanya Devadat, Andra, Ananta Vijaya, Sukhas, and Manipuspa. We we'll try to remember all the name of the consuls in this section. So just to summarize, uh, we'll be going back to our mind map and see, we have seen today Sanjay, how Sanjay describes various signs of victory for the Pandava army, especially the transcendental sound of the different councils of Krishna and Arjuna, which basically shattered the hearts of the sons of Dhritarashtra. So we will stop here. And in the next section, next session we'll be seeing uh, how Krishna and the Bhakta Vashala, that is a verse number 21 to 27. And also it describes uh, Krishna appears as the chariot driver of the Arjuna, of Arjuna, revealing his quality as the Bhakta Vashala. So how Arjuna orders Krishna to place his chariot between the two armies because he wants to see who is present there in the Kurukshad battle. Seeing those assembled for battle, Arjuna becomes hesitant to fight. So we will be seeing in that next session. Till then, we will recap and we will try to remember the slokas as much as possible. Hare Krishna.